Brian Johnson doesn't want to die, and with an estimated net worth of half a billion, he's got enough money to try out every drug and procedure that scientists have come up with to remain young. But that's only half of the story, because Johnson has really developed an entire new philosophy of life that he wants everyone to sign up to, and it's all about beating entropy increase. But let's start at the beginning. Brian Johnson has launched an entire movement that he calls Don't Die with T-shirts, has a supplement plan called Blueprint, and a company that sells the stuff had Botox injected into his private parts. His blood plasma replaced claims he's the healthiest person on the planet, that his telomeres say he's 10 years old, and he measures his health among other things by the duration of his nighttime erections. His recent record stands at 3 hours and 49 minutes. His goal is to see the last Bitcoin halving in 2140, that's 115 years from now. It's easy to make fun of Brian Johnson as a health nut, but he has a grander vision. Don't Die isn't just about fighting microplastics and food dyes. He believes that it's the ultimate goal of any species to survive and we aren't doing all that well. We have largely accepted environmental contamination. We have accepted that the need to work cuts into sleep and exercise. We have accepted living conditions that are too loud, too bright at night, too stress-inducing, and too far removed from nature. We have accepted highly processed foods with synthetic ingredients. We accept all this as side effects of industrialization on the rationale that it's still better than living in caves. Probably true, but Johnson says we've become too complacent about this. It's about time we stop to knowingly wreck our own health. Do something. Don't die. But that we neglect our physical well-being as only part of the story. Johnson is convinced that artificial intelligence is going to dramatically change the world in the near future. And I agree with him. Once we have machines that are more intelligent than the average human, that's going to change everything very rapidly. And we're not prepared for what's to come. Most of us aren't prepared anyway, because Johnson says that, well, first of all, we need to survive the AI revolution, so don't die. But even if we survive that, we'll have to entirely rethink our goals. Western society is currently largely driven by capitalism that, in one way or another, optimizes well-being through profit. One can argue how well that works, but there's no denying that we do currently use this system and it's worked reasonably well so far. But AI is going to make wealth irrelevant, Johnson thinks, and then the only rational goal we'll have is don't die. What he's proposing then is an entirely new philosophy that one might call survivalism. Don't measure your success by how much money you make, by how well you do at surviving. That is, his health obsession is just a way to quantify how well he's doing at living up to his own new goal. Here is how he thinks about this himself. Hi, my name is Brian Johnson. I am the founder of Don't Die. Don't Die is an attempt at answering the most important question that we face on planet Earth. That is, what does a species do when you're giving birth to super intelligence? Now, we have a lot of answers today in the form of our current societal systems, democracy and capitalism, uh, Christianity, Islam, socialism. There's a bigger question that arises, however, are those systems still going to be adequate to address the needs of us as a species? Will they still deliver the ethical and moral imperatives? Will they still be the stable philosophical frameworks that we rely upon? Will they be a goal that we can give to AI that we can socialize with not only our our computer friends, but also ourselves? The Don't Die is a full stack ideology that is attempting to answer these most important questions. And it begins with physical systems where you can measure entropy uh, in physics. You can also measure entropy in biological systems. It's numerical. 
And so these conversations around AI, or don't, don't die, typically take between uh, 60 and 90 minutes for someone to grok the ideas. But I would just introduce this to you as a concept that this is a an attempt that try to answer uh, what we do in the most practical terms possible. Aging is the accumulation of errors in our bodies that you can loosely interpret as entropy increase. Entropy increase is a law of nature, but that's just overall in the entire universe. You can locally decrease entropy if you have energy available. And we have the energy. We just don't know how to use it to repair aging-related damages. Not yet. But I think Brian's right that this will become our goal as a species once sufficiently many people understand that it's achievable in the first place. And I guess he sees himself as the prophet who made them see the light. I'm not at all sure that AI is going to make wealth irrelevant, so that's where I get off the bus. I expect that at least in the near future, AI is going to dramatically concentrate power in the hands of wealthy people. I can also just about guess what economists would say about this. If people have survival as their goal, then that creates monetary value for products and services that help people reach that goal. So we're back to capitalism to optimize people's utility. Capitalism is a sort of fixed point of societal self-optimization that will be hard to get rid of. But I'll let economists pick that fight. Be that as it may, I think Johnson is right that if you look at the long-term prospects of any species, you're back to natural selection and the ultimate goal becomes survival. I guess that also unites Johnson, at least in spirit, with Elon Musk, who's made it his mission to single-handedly raise the fertility rate back to replacement level. That was Brian Johnson's grand vision to the extent that I understand it. To me, it sounds ambitious, but not unreasonable. It is, however, surprisingly divisive. He's a scammer, a snake oil salesman, a narcissist, a middle-aged man in a severe midlife crisis with a vampiric Voldemort vibe, and on and on it goes. Why the hate? I think it's partly because Johnson asks people to adhere to a lifestyle that, besides money, requires a very restrictive diet, a lot of exercise and religiously protecting your sleep, which to most people doesn't sound like a lot of fun. It doesn't help that he's on Twitter each day to reprimand others for not sleeping enough, for not exercising enough, for eating the wrong things or drinking the wrong things or breathing the wrong things, according to Brian Johnson. A typical Johnson tweet reads like this. Friends, I have the best biomarkers in the world. I'm the healthiest person on the planet. I'm fitter than most teenagers. My skin is smoother than that of women in their 20s who obsess over theirs. I've more stamina in bed than men in their 20s. I've better health markers than any hater, health influencer, and anti-aging doctor and scientist. My mind is sharper than it's ever been and so on. I would interpret this as him trying to be inspiring and leading by example, but I can see that it might come across as narcissistic or condescending. Though I suspect that much of the hate he gets has little to do with either his initiative or his biomarkers. It's because the guy's rich and mostly fails to acknowledge that other people can't afford living as healthy as he does. An example that springs to my mind is Rohin, a cardiologist in the UK. Leaving aside his YouTube hobby, Rohin works a lot of night shifts, which yeah, probably isn't all that healthy. But what's the alternative? Do we just let people die if they have a heart attack at night because, you know, all these cardiologists and nurses must watch out for their biomarkers? Or how about having a baby? That's not good for your sleep pattern, trust me. So if your ultimate goal is maxing your biomarkers, is the logical conclusion to not have children? Or do you hire a nanny to take care of the baby full time? I think that everyone needs to find a sensible balance between conflicting life goals given the constraints they face. And that Brian Johnson doesn't acknowledge this is probably part of the reason that people question his mission, if not his sanity.
It doesn't help that many of the treatments and drugs he's tried are difficult for the average person to get their hands on. He's tried, for example, rapamycin and metformin. Both are prescription drugs that he takes off-label under doctor's supervision. He's also tried total plasma replacement, some stem cell things, hyperbaric oxygen therapy and various others. None of those are cheap and none of those are easily accessible unless you're fucking rich. If you take all this together, the message he's sending, willingly or unwillingly, is that rich people are going to live forever and they'll let the rest of us die. And then maybe it isn't so surprising that many people are a little dismayed. That said, there's some relevant context to Brian Johnson's preachings, which is that his health obsession is a fairly recent development that he only started a few years back. He seems to have had somewhat of a come-to-Jesus moment after being overweight and living off junk food for the first 45 years of his life. The newly converted are often the worst, but maybe in a few years he'll relax a bit. Even leaving aside the haters, a lot of people are understandably scared skeptical that Brian Johnson's efforts are going to do much. For one thing, one can reasonably argue that it's good that nature has a turnover process in which old people die and young carry on, and quite possibly he's just wasting the limited time of his life fretting about microplastics in his sperm. Indeed, how much his biomarkers actually tell us about biological aging is presently rather unclear. Things like blood glucose and fat and liver values are rather standard indicators that are known to be correlated with many health risks. Other measures like telomere length and inflammation markers can reasonably be linked to the body's ability to regenerate, which does sound like a good thing, but whether that'll actually help him live longer remains to be seen. A recent study found, for example, that this woman who reached the age of 117 had very short telomeres indeed, yet was otherwise remarkably healthy. This is just a sample of one and not super conclusive, but it suggests that telomere length isn't a meaningful indicator of health. At present, it's impossible to tell how much of his health actually comes from all the things he's trying and how much is due to him having good genes or, you know, having lived a rather sheltered life. If you think he looks good for 48 years, he's tried several facial treatments to remove sun damage, increase collagen production and also a fat transfer from a donor that he had an allergic reaction to. Either way though, I think looks don't say all that much about a person's biological age. The best example I can think of is Roger Penrose, who just turned 94 and who speaks more coherently than most people half his age. So I understand the reasons for people's skepticism, but again, I think it would be somewhat missing the point. If you believe that artificial intelligence will soon exceed human intelligence, then we're likely to see rapid advances in medicine in the near future. It probably won't exactly be a pill that'll make you young again, but a plausible near-term development is, for example, the possibility to regrow and replace organs that have worn down. By Johnson's philosophy, you only have to live long enough until the pace of medical progress is faster than that of human aging. And he's right that there is no fundamental reason why humans must age. It takes energy to prevent the build-up of entropy, but we do have the energy. This is why I think it's indeed possible that in the next decade, scientists will discover some longevity treatments that actually work. Indeed, if I was rich, I'd spend my money in very similar ways. And then I'd call it the pink print protocol just to annoy everyone. The boring story here is that the only scientifically proven methods that will help you live longer are to eat well, sleep well, exercise and stay away from drugs. The not so boring story is that Johnson makes himself a guinea pig for all of us and he's trying to inspire a great rethink. 
You may not buy into his entire don't die philosophy, but I think it's plausibly true that life expectancy can be optimized by paying attention to nutrition and biomarkers. Will that help you live to 200 years? Probably not, but it could indeed help you live longer or at least avoid some age-related problems and then maybe you'll live long enough to merge with an AI. I'm not rich enough to follow in Johnson's footsteps, but I'm just about rich enough to have signed up for cryopreservation brain only. Cryopreservation is a medical process that pauses all biological activity by cooling a body to very low temperatures. Special cryoprotectants prevent ice crystal damage. It's not freezing. And patients are preserved now in the hope that future advances could revive and cure the original condition. I did think with a German company called Tomorrow Bio who've sponsored this video. It's not like you have to hand the money over to them. The way that I've done it, which is fairly common, is that I have a life insurance that, in the event of my death, will be paid out to Tomorrow Bio. While research is constantly progressing, it's currently not yet possible to revive a human after they've been cryopreserved, but there's no fundamental biological reason why revival would not have eventually be possible. The potential payoff seems to me so enormous that personally, I think it's at least worth a try. Tomorrow Bio takes a very scientific approach to cryopreservation. They constantly update their routines according to the newest research. They have a standby team and they also have a community. If you've been toying with the idea of cryopreservation, I recommend you check out their website or schedule a call with someone from their team. And maybe we'll see each other in 1000 years.